I'll, I'll bring up a, a, a reliever on there. He's was, he was one of another guy that I kind of wanted to see get pushed up to. Like he kind of had done all that he could do in, in Greensboro. And he's starting to get to the point where he's a little bit of an older guy. Sign si Nielsen has kind of been like a intriguing guy, a little bit of like a data, data darling kind of guy, um, lower arm slot, um, interesting fastball, that kind of stuff. On there, finally got called up to Altoona, pitched twice, four innings, eight strikeouts. Um, only gave up three hits, one walk. Um, he's he's had a really solid year, and 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 you know you worry about some guys moving up to Double A. That's like especially for re relievers and stuff like that. You know, Jaden Woods was a guy I was like really high on, and he was having a pretty good year in uh, in Greensboro, and he's kind of getting blown up every other start in Altoona, which kind of right. shows like the unpredictable nature of like relievers and stuff like that. That Nielsen stepped right into Double A and just kind of shoved both times he pitched last week. So he um he kind of took the the place of Peralta, yeah, mm -hmm. in Double A, mm -hmm. huh? So like the Peralta was a Double A lefty reliever who was pitching really well, um, yeah, and Nielsen coming up and, and kind of taking that place. I think that's why I know I know you and Nola uh were were a little upset about losing Peralta, but I think that that's like I'm just I'm never gonna lose sleep over losing a guy like that because. In this case, here you've got you just got another Peralta right behind them, right? Um, and I mean, he's, it's a it's a double A reliever. If I can give up a double A reliever for a major league reliever, I'll do it all day. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, he's he put up good numbers in Greensboro. Uh, it was the second time at the level, uh, but yeah, two point three nine ERA, eleven point nine five strikeouts per nine, thirty one percent strikeout rate. And yeah, good start in Altoona. So also what has not given ahead. up a home run all year. Pitch it in Greensboro too. Yeah. Impressive. He only gave up one last year. Mm -hmm. He's been he has been like really so they don't usually do like like set like closers and, and, and stuff like that, just because a lot of them like they all have even like the relievers have like their own like pitching schedule and stuff like that. So, so it's hard to line that up to every time they have like a lead and stuff like that. But like if he's usually given like those kind of certain situations and, and, and stuff like that, like big end. So yeah. he's been solid from like the, like just one of those like a uh, seventh, eighth round picks saved, a, save a little bit money on college reliever kind of thing in, in the draft, but he's just pitched well everywhere he's gone. And um, it was good to see finally him finally get promoted and he's done well since with it. So like you said, double air relievers, they're kind of just like dime a dozen, you know, like this week he'll, he may do good and like next week he'll, he could get blown up and stuff like that. But yeah, but, yeah, yeah, no, I agree. Um, all right. So let's, let's shift over to hitters who, um, who had a good week on the offensive side of things and you can't say Mitch Jeb. Well, no, Mitch, Mitch Jeb, Jeb this week. Mitch Jeb had like three errors in two games, which and they were like really rough looking errors. So I kind of crossed him off the list immediately after there seeing that. That's so, what I'm talking about, Murphy. He, you he did had, this, Jim. <laughs> Jim. Jim talked to you. Jim got in his head. <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, so who we who we got down there? How about the? I mean, uh, I don't know if you want to talk about the new guys or not, but yeah, your it's your new, call. New guys, so. New, new guys are here. We could we could go both new guys. There's there's another guy we haven't talked about in a while who kind of came on strong this past week. Uh, Sammy Siani had nine hits, uh, a couple stolen bases, a couple doubles, a triple. Really really good week. Um, Altoona is kind of thin when it comes to like prospects now. <laughs> Everyone's getting either sent to uh, either getting traded or or um, moved up and stuff like that. But uh, Siani Siani chance to kind of stand out and he did um there's we were talking about it like after charles mcadoo got traded like probably make until like the new guys got brought in kind of make a case that siani was probably your top prospect in the upper levels top hitting prospect in the upper levels which which is probably isn't wild isn't, yeah yeah isn't great but like at no. least like he went out and like performed well that this this week so um he he, he he's shown like flashes in double A. It's just he hasn't done it consistently yet. Like it, he he some of his numbers look like he's like right there from really taking the next step or really you know getting noticed and stuff like that. It's just he can't do it 
for a long enough period kind of thing. So. Yeah. I'll say this, like it's encouraging at least to see, cause, cause Siani's strike strikeout rate was his issue for mm-hmm. the longest time. And that was, his key, that was keeping his batting average low. Um, but like all the tools were there, but it's like, dude, you've got to make contact. And he finally started doing that this year in Greensboro. Uh, and then you see him get bumped up to double A and the strikeout rate went up from where it was, but it's still in a somewhat comfortable spot. What you need to see out of him now is a little bit more like he needs to start driving the ball a little yeah. bit more. Yeah. You know, he needs to start that that power tool needs to start coming around. He needs to start. He needs to start just hitting the ball better. Um, but I'm I don't think I, I don't think there's a lot of potential here for Sammy Siani yeah. to, to develop into much of anything still. Mm-hmm. But but like it's not over for him. Like he, there's yeah. there's still like a glimmer of hope there that he can turn into a fourth outfielder i think yeah it's more of a longer pick you know long shot kind of thing but yeah intriguing they always had like an intriguing tool set kind of thing like yeah well yeah kind of a you could argue about the power tool set thing you know i yeah, hope something comes i think you could have made an argument that until you know this year's crop of draft picks came in like connor griffin that like he was the toolsiest guy in the system hitting wise yeah just like all around has a has all of them you know mm-hmm. they're not all that great yeah. <laughs> but like you can like see that they're there you know yeah um so yeah what about uh who, who, who else we want to talk about how about billy cook you want to talk about billy, billy cook? cook billy cook or nick uh nick york either, either one they both were fantastic let's just, yeah let's lump them together so it's the yeah. the new guys um, billy cook from baltimore nick york from boston they both made their debuts in uh in indianapolis this week Cook only played two games, but he had three doubles and a home run in those two games. Five hits and two stolen bases. Where did he play? Where did he play? He played left field, right field. Okay. So no center field. Um, they uh, they had I think Sawinski in center field the first game, and then uh, and then um, Gorski in center the other game. So I'd much rather see, give Cook a, a shot in center than than either of those two right now. I get you know like the you know they have. I want to keep Sawinski, you know, kind of familiar with the position and stuff like that, just in case. But um, it'd be interesting to see Cook. Um, the home run was to like right center, op- like opposite field kind of mm-hmm. thing. It was pretty impressive. It was a little bit out out of the strike zone, the other um, on the other side of the plate. So it was impressive to see him get out there and, and get enough on it to to send it o- over the field. I don't think he's going to be. The frame kind of looks like, like, so like the exit velocities were a little, a little bit below average. So I was kind of like, maybe there isn't. And then looking at like kind of his frame, I can kind of see where like the power is probably going to be like average-ish kind, kind of thing. So it was even more impressive to see it hit him on home run like that. Um, but he looked good. He played a ball off the wall pretty pretty well. So he looks pretty comfortable out there in, uh, in the outfield. Like I said, now it's just this trade becomes even even better if he can play center field at that point. Yeah. Um, if he can play, if he can play all three outfield spots, then all of a sudden you're looking at, you're looking at a guy who can bring some value to your major league team. So yeah. yeah. Um, I'm, I'm curious to see how, how, how well he does. I'm curious to see how long he's there, but I just based off of the numbers here and, and based off of what the pirates could utilize on their major league roster, I think there's a pretty good shot we see Billy Cook by the end of the year. Potentially, yeah. Potentially. So I have to find a fit, fit out there in the outfield, stuff like that, but probably I wouldn't imagine it'd be shoot too hard. Yeah. Kind of thing. All right. All right so then they, we also got Nick York, um, 2020 first round pick out of Boston. Uh, he was He was dealt in the Quinn Priester trade. Uh, Quinn Priester made his Boston debut um, yesterday, Oof. did not do well uh for for triple a uh in boston there but um yeah talk about uh talk about nick york what did you see from him this week he played five games and he got a hit in each one so he did he did he did really good three doubles um one thing that i noticed like i went back and watched like i I did that breakdown article of him and um notice he he uses the other others all all fields especially he goes the other way a lot and like immediately like his first hit was to the right field 
and he had a bunch of the hits going going the other way and stuff like that. So just a really really solid hitter. Um, pretty much uh, exactly what I expected from him, kind of kind of thing. Um, really good making contact in the zone. Didn't chase too often. Um, yeah, Pirates needed some some prospects in the upper levels, and and they got two, and and they immediately hit the ground running with their can't really ask for too much more than than what they got so far for sure yeah, yeah i i'm i'm pretty happy with with the acquisition of nick york um yeah yeah and yeah great first week in indianapolis he 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 performed really well did exactly what you want to see out of him hit the ball um good contact like you mentioned kind of going to all fields um gap to gap power with with some extra base hits yeah it was it was a good good first week for nick york mm-hmm. so uh, another guy where i don't know i think the odds of seeing cook are probably higher than seeing york this year um but nick york looks like i said i kind of compared him to like nick gonzalez if the the hit tool actually developed um to like where where you kind of want to see it and yeah, yeah. It, 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 he's he's been he's been very good this year um between triple a potucket and is it, are they still in potuck or are they in worcester 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 yeah whatever it is. Yeah, yeah whatever yeah, that one. whatever they yeah that one is there um <laughs> and then and then indy so yeah good stuff Yeah, it's good. Good to see. I, like, if if Gonzalez is going to be out long term and stuff like that, I mean, I mean, I, I know they can't add everybody on that. We already talked about bringing Bub, Bubba Chandler up and and like Billy Cook and stuff like that. But man, like if, if uh, IKF can really play like every single position and play it really well and stuff like that, and York keeps hitting, I, I'd almost rather have York up there than than Triolo if you can have IKF play third base too. So yeah, I mean York played. Point. York played a uh, left field one of the games too. So yeah, he can come, he can play all over, which is, which is valuable. It's valuable. Yeah. Four games at second base, one in left field this past week. So yeah. All right, Murphy. Well, we yeah. appreciate you coming on. Okay. Um, again, you can find uh, Murphy uh, on Twitter at underscore Murph. V eighty eight. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Is that right? Mm-hmm. And then also make sure you're subscribed to the Bucks on Deck Substack. Lots of good stuff over there. Every day you'll find more and more uh, information about the Pirates and their system. Uh, and then also the Bucks on Deck podcast coming out every Tuesday. Make sure you're subscribed to that for uh, for 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 more weekly uh, prospect talk. Those selfish people. Pretty much. You can't have Bubba. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Murphy. On that All note, right. have a good one. Thanks for thanks for uh, hopping on here. Yeah, no problem. Yep. Man. Thanks for having me. All right, see you, man.